In this lesson, we're going to learn about fractions and putting fractions into simplest form. A fraction is in simplest form when the numerator and denominator cannot both be evenly divided by any number other than 1. So if we have 1 in our numerator, it's always going to be a fraction that is in simplest form. So for instance, if we had 1 fifth, 1 seventh, the other thing that you can say is 2, as long as we don't have an even number down there in the denominator, then it is in simplest form. So for instance, if we put a 9 down there, we know that 2 is a prime number and that it's only factors. The only thing that can be divisible by is 1 and 2. And since 9 is not divisible by 2, then it's not divisible by 2 either. So if we add both prime numbers, for instance, in the numerator and denominator, then we are also in simplest form. Okay, so again, it says a fraction is in simplest form when the numerator denominator cannot be both evenly divided by any number other than 1. Since this is the only way that we can go ahead and divide both 2 and 7 is both by 1, and if we did that to have an equivalent fraction, hey, we're still going to get 2 sevenths, so there's no reason as to why it is that we would continue to do that. Those fractions right then and there are in simplest form. You might want to pause the video to go ahead and write down your understanding of this in your log or on your paper. Here are some different instructions that you might see to tell you, hey, I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Put things into simplest form. You might just say simplify. It might say reduce to the simplest form. Or you might be working with an addition or subtraction problem with fractions, where it'll say right then and there, express your answer in simplest form. Even if it doesn't say so, if it just says add or subtract, typically when you're working with fractions, you do express answers in simplest form. Here are some examples of simplifying. For that first fraction, I have 5 tenths. I know that both 5 and 10 are both divisible by 5, so I go ahead and divide by 5 in the numerator, and I will also divide by 5 in the denominator. Whatever I do in the numerator, I must do in the denominator. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 5 tenths is equivalent to 1 half, and 1 half is in simplest form. There's no other numbers that I can divide both the numerator and denominator by. Now with 6 sixteenths, I see right away with 6 sixteenths that those are both even numbers, and I know that even numbers are both divisible by 2. So I can start there, and I get the fraction. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Again, here's another example. What I might do is I might say, okay, 20 divided by 60 that's 20 sixtieths. What am I going to divide by? Let's see. Let's try 10. They both end with 0. That leaves me with 2 sixths. Now, 2 sixths is not in simplest form yet because both of those are even numbers. And they're both still divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So one-third is the simplest form at that point. Twenty-sixtieths is much simpler to think of it as one-third. Time for you to try. Copy these down and hit pause to be able to solve them, please. For that first problem, you might have noticed they both end with 5. And you'd be all, okay, well, I'll just divide both by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 45 divided by 5 is 9, and we, so we have 3 ninths. However, that is not in simplest form, because those are still both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 15 45ths in simplest form is 1 third. Did you get that one correct? Hope so. For that next problem, you might look at 18 and 36 and recognize, oh, they're both divisible by 9. Again, there's more than one way to always solve a problem, just as long as you end up with that same simplest form. 
18 divided by 9 is 2. 36 divided by 9 is 4. Up, oh, you recognize that right there? Both even numbers, both divisible by 2 then. 2 divided by 2, I'm sorry, that's 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 18 36 is equivalent to 1 half. Now, if you were a smart mathematician, smart student, you're going, oh, well, that's just 18 divided by 18, which is 1, and 36 divided by 18, which is 2. Might have recognized here that we can just divide by 4 in the numerator and denominator. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 4 twelfths in simplest form is 1 third. How many steps did it take you for that final one there? Just as long as you did get 1 third, I would not have minded if you had divided by 2 in the numerator and denominator, and then divided by 2 again. It's time to play the simplest form game. When I point to a number, you tell me whether or not it is in simplest form. Pointing at this fraction right here, 4 sevenths. Answer is, yes, it is in simplest form. How about this fraction right here? Nope, it is n not in simplest form. 9 and 15 are both divisible by 3. How about this one right here? 1 fifth, is it in simplest form? Yes, it is. How about this fraction right here? Nope, it is not in simplest form. How about this fraction right here, 3 ninths? Nope, it is not in simplest form. We can divide both the numerator and denominator by 3 to get 1 third. So again, this one was not. 4 sixtieths was not. 9 fifteenths was not. How about this final one right here? If we look at this final one right here, 9 twenty-eighths. We know 9 is divisible by 1. 3 and 9. Is 28 divisible by 9? Hmm. Is 28 divisible by 3? That means that 9 28 is in simplest form. And then so I'd cross these out here. I'll just do a little bit of math. Right in there. Divided by 10. Divided by 10 leaves me with 4 6. 4 6 is still not in simplest form. If I divide by 2, divide by 2, I get 2 thirds. And then this one here, we had recognized that they're both divisible by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is fifths. Thanks for playing and learning more about simplest form.